Uh, I rise to speak on President-elect Obama's nomination of Eric Holder to be the Attorney General of the United States. It is nothing new in Washington for it to be said of a nominee that he or she is the best person for a job. That happens all the time. We've all heard it. And it will surprise no one in this room or elsewhere in Washington to know that it isn't always the case. But in this case, for this appointment at this time, I believe that it is true. I believe that Eric Holder is the best person to be Attorney General of the United States. It is hard to overstate the significance of the work of the Department of Justice to the American people. It is hard to overstate how vital it is that the American people have confidence in that department, from the Attorney General down to the most junior line attorney. It is hard to overstate the importance of our trust that this great department makes decisions on the merits, proceeds on the facts and the evidence and the law, and carefully protects itself from political interference. The Bush administration has compromised the American people's faith in their Department of Justice by compromising the integrity of the department at its highest levels. We need that back. What we need now is an attorney general who, first, understands the inner workings of the department so that he can set the ship right. Second, we'll be fiercely independent and will make decisions based on the facts and the evidence and the law, not on politics or pressure from the White House. And third, has the temperament and experience to be strong and fair through all of the pressures that mount up on that office. Eric Holder is the best possible person for this difficult job at this difficult time. We all know Mr. Holder's long and distinguished experience at the Justice Department and within the justice system. He's been a line attorney in the public integrity section, prosecuting corrupt public officials of both parties. He's been a judge appointed by President Ronald Reagan. He's been the Deputy Attorney General, the number two position at the department. He's been the United States Attorney for the District of Columbia, and he's been a highly regarded attorney in private practice. One would be hard pressed to find a better experienced candidate. It's no surprise then that so many organizations and individuals that work with the criminal justice system every day have endorsed Mr. Holder's nomination including the National Fraternal Order of Police, the National District Attorneys Association, the National Association of Police Organizations, the International Association of Chiefs of Police, the National Association of Assistant United States Attorneys, the National Center for Victims of Crime, the National Organization for Victim Assistance, and Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Mr. Holder's experience is unquestionable, but it is not only experience that makes him the right person for this uniquely challenging post. I know Eric Holder. When I was a United States attorney, he was my colleague as the United States attorney for the District of Columbia. And then my boss, when he became deputy attorney general. I have great personal confidence in him. In our work at the department, the U.S. attorneys saw firsthand in Eric over and over the qualities of temperament, intelligence, judgment, and independence that are essential for an attorney general, and especially for an attorney general who takes office during a time when the department is in distress. As I know Eric Holder, so also do I know the damage and destruction that was wrought by the Bush administration on our Department of Justice. In the Judiciary Committee, under the distinguished leadership of Chairman Patrick Leahy, we worked hard to find out what had been done there and to bring it to light. My colleague, 
Senator Schumer of New York and Senator Feinstein of California deserve particular credit in that struggle. Because I had worked in the department, I was familiar with many of the institutions, the traditions, and the practices of the department that had been cast aside or ignored. The result, the result was a damaged institution, its reputation compromised, its integrity challenged, and its morale sadly diminished. Now, more than anything else, someone needs to put that right. Eric Holder has the knowledge, the experience, and the character to do that.